We're back again in our One Health series and today we're going to talk about the role of the vet on farm in reducing and tackling antibiotic resistance. One Health is about our animals, ourselves and our farms, the environment. But a key part of this is on our farms where a farmer and vet work together. That relationship is critical as we tackle this challenge of antibiotic resistance. Today I'm going to be joined by Donald Lynch, a vet in Tullamore, and a Galway-based vet, Conor Geraghty, where they're going to give us some practical tips and examples of how that relationship works. So some tips for reducing antimicrobial use in our sheep flocks. I guess each farm goes through with, with his or her vet. What use is there? Where are we using antimicrobials? Where are we using a lot of them? And then see, can we do something to address that? Commonly on sheep farms, we're talking about abortion prevention and lameness prevention. And if we do both, then we will reduce the use of antimicrobials on those farms. As a vet, I think the real advantage is we're working with farmers is when you have a detailed knowledge of the farm and you have a very good working relationship between yourself and the farm in question. So I would like to say to with all my clients, I know how their farm works, I know the problems they have and I know the advantages and maybe the disadvantages of some of the setups they have. We would then use that information when we're developing plans on how to prevent disease on the farm. We're looking at calf hood diseases, so we're looking at pneumonia and maybe neonatal diarrhoea which are two of the big problems we deal with in the springtime. Another one that will come to mind, we're here on a dairy farm, so mastitis is a big issue. And obviously, milk is the end product of what we produce from dairy farms. So it's critically important that we have a good quality product going out the farm gate. When we do think about that, antibiotics have been a part of this milk production. When you do have cows milking, you're going to get a certain amount of mastitis, and that's unavoidable. But we as vets and farmers have worked hard over the last number of years to reduce the amount of antibiotics we're using, but also to produce a better quality product. So you think of all the other control measures you can use towards mastitis. So we've bred cows that are more resistant to disease. Then when we have those cows on the farm, we attempt to manage them better. So we look at housing, we look at ventilation in the housing, we look at the bedding, we make everything cleaner, we reduce the chances of them getting antibiotics. And now we're looking at selective dry cow therapy, where we reduce the antibiotic being used in the cows, we use a teat seal to prevent infection getting in, and we have to pick the appropriate cows. So we pick the low risk cows that we can use for this. We start off maybe with smaller numbers, and then as we progress through a program, we get into much bigger numbers of cows where we would see into the future that we will be using a limited amount of antibiotics, both in the dry cow period as a prevention, but critically also in the milking cow period. Our aim is that we will reduce the use of antibiotics during the lactation to virtually zero. When talking about reducing antimicrobials on beef farms, we're talking about reducing the use in areas of the most common diseases calf scour, calf pneumonia, and weanling pneumonia. So how do we do that? Firstly, we look at identifying the pathogens that are at play by taking samples, by doing post-mortems, and by doing herd investigations into ventilation, etc. Vaccination will play a part in a lot of these cases, with especially calf scour, but also with pneumonia outbreaks. And we use the data that we've gathered over the years to best inform us how to deal with these outbreaks. So it's important to take samples when outbreaks occur. It's important to post-mortem animals and use culture and sensitivity to identify which antibiotics we can use and are most effective on that farm. Today we've looked at AMR and we've looked at some examples on farm. We've looked at a beef, a dairy and a sheep farm example. But I think when we look at some of the take home messages about AMR, the important thing is to develop a good working relationship with your vet. So do they understand what's happening on your farm and are in a position to work with you to come up with the best control measures to prevent disease being an issue on your farm? So, Connor, would you agree with me that the relationship is the most important part? Absolutely. I mean, you develop a relationship with your vet. The vet knows the farm, knows what's happening on the farm, builds up a bank of knowledge through uh, the experience of working with you, whether it's a flock health plan or a herd health plan, through troubleshooting some disease outbreaks, gathering culture and sensitivity uh, data from samples, post-mortems, etc. And I think, as you were saying earlier, Donald, about a herd health plan, it shouldn't be generic, it should be dynamic, specific to the farm. And 
as practicing vets, I think what we try to do is to prioritize the top three or four things that need to be improved on a farm at a time rather than trying to fix the whole thing in one go uh, and maybe yeah, that's... work with the farmer and move along that way. Yeah, look, I, I'd agree with that. And, you know, over the years, we've often been asked to produce a generic herd health plan. It's not possible. Every farm is different. The milking parlour is different. The cows walk farther. The sheds are different. Ventilation is different. They have different types of cattle. And maybe even their grazing systems are different. So what I would say is the key thing after today is to go away, talk to your vet, further develop the relationship you have with your own vet, and come up with a plan to work forward as part of a team to improve the disease management or health management on your farm.